Hello everyone, and welcome back. So this time we're going to be talking about a circularity tolerance, which is sometimes, and sometimes quite often, accidentally called a roundness tolerance. That's not what it's supposed to be though. It's not roundness tolerance, it's a circularity. And what it does is it specifies acceptable circular surface element variations relative to a perfect circle, and it creates a boundary of two concentric circle. You can also apply it to a cylinder or a cone or even a sphere um, and then you would just take cross sections and say all these cross sections should be circular. If they're not, it fails. Now, circular cross sections exist where all points are equidistant from an axis or center point. So for this box, there is no circular cross section. For a cone, however, there are circular cross sections, just there along the axis. Now, if we apply circularity to a cylindrical surface, it only constrains the form only constrains my surface form. It will have the feature symbol and it will have a tolerance value. There is never a diamond symbol and it's never maximum material condition or a least material condition value. Circular tolerance is always applied to a surface and the leader will terminate on the surface. You'll see it like this. Um, you will never see it attached to a size dimension. It will always be attached with a leader line. Or, if you're in a model, it can be attached to the diamond dimension right there. But never in an orthographic view. Now the boundaries for this are two concentric circles. And what we've seen for everything else is that there is a perfect form boundary. And just like with that, that will um, establish a certain amount of circularity tolerance. So if we move towards the perfect form boundary, well, I'm not able to break that perfect form boundary. And so that will constrain my circularity. So I really only need to add a circularity tolerance if I don't want to, um, if I want to make an even finer constraint on that circularity. So in this case, I can go up plus or minus 0 0.01. So my circularity tolerance in this case, established by my size tolerance, would be 0.885 minus 0.865, which would be 0.02. So I would only need to apply a circularity tolerance if I want to constrain that further. Now, circularity variation is permitted by departure from the mass material condition because if we're at the mass material condition for a surface tolerance, that mass material condition is going to make a boundary. There is no more form tolerance when we're at the mass material condition. So that size tolerance is going to limit my maximum circularity variations. And if I'm close to that, well, then I don't really need any circularity tolerance or my circularity tolerance doesn't even come to effect because I can't vary up, I can only vary down. However, if I move away from the maximum circularity condition, if I'm going smaller, then that's where my circularity tolerance would really begin to shine because as I get to a smaller and smaller circle, I might be able to have a lot more variation and this is where I would want to constrain it to make sure that it doesn't vary too much. So, as I said before, you want that circularity tolerance when you want your size, um, you want your um, circularity to be less than what your size tolerance will constrain it to. This came, point will constrain it to 0 0.02. And you want it to be more circular than that when it goes away from the max material condition. And in this case, you would have a tolerance of 0 0.005. And it's not both directions, that is only half either way. So half up, half down, or from the max position to the minimum position going around, you would check to see, okay, what's the max value I read? And going all the way around that axis, what is the min value I read? Now, I think, yes, okay, I'll have another slide, so I'm going to talk about this right now. Um, the axis right here that I'm measuring from, like I use a, I'm using a full in indicator right here. I'm going to go around a surface. I'm going to try to keep it equidistant from some axis that I'm rotating around. Or I would keep my indicator stationary and I would rotate my part. However, if I have my part oriented incorrectly, it's going to read very strangely because that's the cross section it's going to see. So I'm going to have to continuously reorient my part until I find the minimum circularity tolerance, or sorry, the minimum full indicator movement for that particular cross section. So this one would probably pass. Others would not. So like always, form tolerances, especially for surfaces, are very, very difficult to measure. So thank you for listening, and I'll see you all next time.
Goodbye.